So welcome everybody to the seventh SASensei SID event. We have Elizabeth Axelrod with us today, who has been using SAS for uh, a number of years and is the president of, of BASUG and will be talking to us about hash tables. So Elizabeth, over to you. Thank you. Thanks everybody for coming. And Alan, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, yes, yeah, so I've been using SAS at APT for a very long time and I work with uh, very, very large uh, data files. And that, uh, so I'm always uh, looking for more efficient ways to process my data. And that is what led me to develop this paper. Okay, and now my slide is not advanced. Oh, there it goes. Um, so this paper's title, Take Another Look, and um, actually I had given to Alan, um, I sent to Alan a lot of uh, links. So he's got a link to this paper um, and to some other things that I'll be talking about, and he can send that to you after the meeting, I presume. Um, but this paper is actually based on it's an expansion of another of my original paper, which was called Your Code Will Never Be the Same. And I gave it that title because once you see some of the cool things that hash can do beyond uh, lookups and data retrieval, you might start to think about solving your problems in new ways. Now, actually, I had originally wanted to call it Your Life Will Never Be the Same, but my friends told me, Elizabeth, you need to get a life. So. Um, Okay, so um, one thing that I would like to know, and I'm not sure the best way to do, do this, um, I, I want to know, um, it'd be nice to know from you guys, from my audience here, uh, if who has used um, hash to do lookups and data retrieval. Is there any way I can have you guys let me know that, maybe in the chat? Um, I don't know, I'm not seeing it. Okay, well, I'm going to make an assumption that um, most of you have used hash to at least do uh, table lookup and data retrieval, um, but that not many of you uh, have done some of the really cool other things that hash can do. Building tables in memory during program execution, traversing the tables, aggregating data, sorting your data, and saving the contents of hash tables to SAS data sets. Um, so here's the thing, if you're already using hash to do lookups, then you're really almost there. The trick is to look at your problems in a new way and recognize the opportunity to use hash as a solution. So using hash techniques to build tables in memory really enables you to do some pretty cool stuff and solve very complex problems with code that's very easy to write and flows intuitively. Now, having said that, I'm actually going to use a fairly simple example so we can just focus on the basic techniques. So what I'm going to go through today is actually the first of two examples that are contained in my paper. But today, I really only have time to show you the first one. Um, but I think both of these are great starter examples. And by that, I mean um, they're really a good way to get your feet wet with some of these other hash techniques. And they share some common attributes. Um, one thing is these are both based on real problems that I had to solve at work. Um, the techniques used made it really easy to respond to specification changes. Um, you know, it's when your boss comes in and says, oh, could you just make this little teeny tweak. Um, they don't require your data to be sorted. And maybe one of the best things as a, as a sort of starting way to get your feet wet is that you're not going to have to worry about memory constraints. And um, I think sometimes people don't want to start using hash because they're worried about this. Um, you're building tables in memory. Memory is finite, and you can run out of space. Um, of course, there are ways to deal with that, but using these methods, um, using, using the example I'm going to show you, this is just not going to be a problem at all. All right, so here we go. Here's, here's the example. Um, let's say you have a very large file of inpatient hospital claims and another um, long skinny file of hospital IDs. 
And notice that we may have a claim that has a hospital ID that's not in our hospital table. And, and that hospital list has um, hospital types in it. Now notice that my files, that, that neither of these files are sorted and they don't have to be for these techniques to work. So your mission is to create two summary tables. For the first output file, we wanna summarize payments and number of claims by hospital ID. For the second file, for each unique combination, oops, sorry, for each unique combination of patient and hospital, we want to identify the earliest admission date and the latest discharge date that we encounter on any claim for that combination of IDs. So, and if we encounter um, a hospital ID that we don't recognize, that's not in our um, list, uh, we're just gonna wanna put in the hospital type of question mark. So notice that we're summarizing by different classification variables. In one table, it's hospital ID, and in the other, it's patient ID and hospital ID. And I could even add other classification variables and other summary tables if I wanted to. So obviously, you know, one of the things we love about SAS is that you can solve you know, any problem multiple different ways. And um, uh, you're probably already thinking in your mind, well, how would I solve that problem? And without hash, um, chances are you would have to sort your data. And I wanna point out that even if you use PROC SQL, PROC SQL is probably gonna be doing a sort uh, internally. So there's gonna be sorting going on here. Um, and if if the specifications were more complex, you might need multiple sorts, multiple data sets, uh, data steps, uh, multiple procedures. But using hash, we are gonna solve this in one data step and we are not gonna do any sorting. Um, it's gonna be easy to write and um, it'll be really easy to modify if our specifications change. Now you're going to find that I'm going to say throughout this, um, every now and then I'm going to say, and look, we didn't need to sort. And I'm going to say it with a lot of excitement in my voice because I work with these really large files and anytime I can avoid a sort, that makes me really happy. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's start with the logic. And this is really going to be how exactly how the program is going to flow. The first thing we need to do is we have to define all the variables that are gonna show up in any of our hash tables for the program data vector. And before we go on, I wanna say a little bit more about this. So the program data vector is the area in memory that stores the value, the values of all your variables as they're being processed by your data step code. And interestingly, your hash variables that you define do not automatically appear in the program data vector. Now, I imagine an invisible curtain between these environments. And in order for them to talk to each other, you have to first define your hash key and data variables for the PDV before you declare your hash tables. Okay, back to the program logic. So the next thing you're gonna do is um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be using three hash tables in this uh, data step. One lookup table, that's going to find the um, hospital type, and two summary tables. So I declare those, and then I'm going to read an observation from the claims data set. I'm going to see if I can find the hospital ID from the claim in my hospital list hash table to retrieve its hospital type. And then I'm going to accumulate data information from that current claim into my hospital summary table and um, also into my patient hospital summary hash table. And I'm going to loop through this until I'm done reading my claims. And then when I'm all done, I'm going to write out the two summary tables. So, I'm gonna show you the code. Um, and I don't want you to get too hung up on the details of the code. Um, instead, I want you to notice a couple of things. One is that this, should, this is gonna look really familiar to you because it's gonna look a lot 
not like the code that you're using to do table lookups. The other thing is, is that this code flows exactly the way in exactly the, um, the flow that I just showed of the logic. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, define my output data files. These are the two sum, this is what I want to output, the two summary tables. Now the only thing is don't freak out because actually this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to explain why later, but for now just kind of have faith. We are going to output two SAS tables. Then I'm going to, um, I have to remember, I have to define those all the variables that are used in any of my hash tables for the program data vector. And there are a couple of ways I can do this. I can use the length statement, and that's going to get my variables into my PDB. And then and the, I'm doing that for all the new variables that I'm creating. For variables that already exist in files and have all their attributes already defined, I'm going to use a non-executed set statement. And what's nice about that is um, what's going to come with that is all the labels, the formatting, or whatever. OK, and now it's time to declare my hash tables. So um, I'm going to do this in my first iteration of my data step. And remember that underscore n underscore equals 1 is the first iteration of the data step, it's not the first time I've read a record. Because in this case, I have not read a record yet. So I'm declaring my, this is the table lookup. Um, this is the one where I'm, re, I'm reading all the hospitals um, into my data set so that I can retrieve the host type. And using this data set tag, it's basically going to suck all the data in, in one fell swoop, vacuum cleaner style. Then I define my key and data. And um, I always would put this call missing statement in. And I never actually really understood why you were supposed to do it. But, um, and the idea was that you do it so that you don't get that pesky little SAS message in your log that says, oh, you've got some undefined variables. Um, well, you know what? We've defined all the variables for the PDV, so we don't actually need that. Now, that's not to say that you wouldn't ever need a call missing statement, because there are certainly times when you would need it um, later on in the program. And now I'm going to define my, my, declare my first summary table. So in this table, I'm not using the data set argument tag because I'm not pulling in any data yet. I haven't even read any claims, and the data is going to come from the claims that I read. But I do want my output file sorted in ascending order. So I'm going to use this ordered tag to accomplish that. And then notice that even though I've defined my key as HOSP ID, I have to also define it in my, as a data item. Otherwise, it's not going to get output in my uh, output file. Then the next thing I do is I define my other summary table. And this is just basically the same uh, thing that we did before. The difference here is that I've got two keys, patient ID and HOSP ID. And now I'm finished defining, uh, declaring my, uh, my three hash tables. And finally, I can start reading my claims. So I'm going to use the end equals uh, option to set a flag for myself when I've read my last claim, because it's at that point that I'm going to be able to write out my, rec my uh, output files. So remember, the first thing I want to do um, now that I'm reading my claim is I want to see if the hospital ID from the claim is in my hospital ID hash table so that I can retrieve that um, hot type variable. And so I'm going to use the find command. The find command, uh, sorry, I say command, I really meant method, the, the, the hash method find. Um, and if it's found, it's going to retrieve the hospital type for me. This next statement is just something I use to, um, I'm converting a successful return code of zero from the hash method to a Boolean one. And I do that to minimize my own confusion so that I can just continue using standard SAS code. And if I didn't find it, I'm setting it, I'm going to uh, 
um, set Haas pipe to question mark. Okay, now the fun begins. Now it's time to accumulate data in my hospital summary table. Um, and just as a reminder, this is what I'm trying to build. So the first thing I have to do is I have to say, well, do I already have this, the hospital ID from my current claim? Is it already in my hash table? Have I already encountered it before? If not, I need to initialize some variables and I need to add a new entry into my hospital sum, uh, summary table. So I'm gonna use the find command to do that. And I'm, you know, I'm, looking at, I'm looking in my summary table now. And there's my little swip swap that I like to do. And if not found, then I need to initialize my variables and I need to add this record using the add method into my summary table. And then in all cases, whether or not I found it, now it's time to replace the data in the hash table with, um, I, need to, I need to summarize variables, increment claims, and add, to, add payments to total payments. And then I'm gonna use the replace method to get those, to update what's in the table, in my hash table. Now, I just wanna take a minute on this slide because this is really the meat of the whole thing. Um, first of all, notice that I use the, the find method. And I, I'm using this because if I do find it in there, if I find the, the, if I have already encountered this hospital ID in my hospital summary table, then I need to retrieve the values of number of claims and total pay and get them into my program data vector so that I can perform, um, so that I can manipulate them. And then I can, I'm either adding or replacing them, replacing the values um, back into the table. So how cool is this? I am summarized data from a non-sorted file. I am not using a by statement. I can't use a by statement. I can't, can't do it by, by, by statement processing because my file isn't sorted. Um, I don't have a retain statement in here. That's not gonna help me. I don't, I'm not using any arrays. So I think this is kind of the, the beauty and the magic of using um, hash tables to do this kind of aggregation and accumulation. So in step six, remember now I just have to do a very similar thing, but now I'm doing it using different keys and in a different table. Um, and this is just a reminder of what I'm trying to build. So I'm basically going to do the same thing. I first have to, um, if I have not encountered this particular hospital in the, um, sorry, the, it's a patient hospital combination. If I haven't encountered that combination yet in my patient hospital summary file, then I need to initialize a record and add it in. And then um, I'm just going to use these standard data step functions to get the min and max admission date and then replace them. Okay, so how cool is this? In one unsort in, in one data step using unsorted data, I am creating summary tables at different classification levels. And I'm not limited to just these two. My boss comes in and says, oh, and while you're at it, could you please also create summaries at, you know, the numbers of patients for each diagnosis code, um, uh, number of diagnosis codes for each patient, number of uh, hospital admissions for each month, and on and on and on. So I, I just think this is extremely cool. Okay, now, um, we check to see if we're finished reading all of our records. And if we are, it's time to output our files. And so here what I'm gonna do are our summary files. And here what I'm doing is I'm using the output method. Um, this, is, this is the SAS, SAS, sorry, the hash output method. 
And this is not to be confused with the SAS output statement. The SAS output statement, to get multiple records output, you have to iterate through it. Here, we're just, we're invoking this method once for each of our files, and it's going to basically push all the data out, uh, leaf blower style, and I don't have to iterate through the table. Now remember that I wanted to output my data in sorted order. And I'm, I can do, it's going, the output method is going to do that because I declared my table as an ordered, um, I wanted it to be ordered in ascending order. And also, uh, remember that we used data null. When you use the output method like this with the data set argument tag, you cannot specify these um, file names in your data statement. And that's why I had to use data null there. So one more thing about the um, sorting. Um, we don't really know how the data are stored in the hash table. We're going to let SAS worry about that. So don't worry about what's behind the curtain. This is, this is SAS's job to worry about it. We don't care how it's sorted in the table. Um, that, what, what we care about is how the data are going to be retrieved for us, and that is accomplished using that ordered tag. So uh, we did it. You know, in one data step, we, we built tables. Uh, we didn't traverse the tables that. I do in my in the second example, which is in uh, my paper, but we aggregated data. Um, we didn't exactly sort the data, but we were able to create sorted files from unsorted data, and we saved the contents of hash tables to SAS datasets. Um, in my paper, I reference these um, papers, and they're all all this stuff is is in the paper. I also really heavily relied on. Uh, uh, two books. This one here, uh, which is an excellent reference book. If you're off with hash or just even if you're not, I, I highly recommend this book. Um, and the other one is uh, a book by Paul Dorfman and Don Henderson. Um, I was a one of the technical reviewers uh, for this book and let me tell you this is this is the end all be all encyclopedia on hash i don't like to use double negatives but i'm going to there is nothing about hash that is not in this book um, it is amazing and oh here they this was right after the book was published look at these guys they're very proud of their book and they should be um, also uh paul and john uh did a training uh for uh, Global Forum 2020, and that's online, and the link for that is also in what I sent to, uh, to Alan. Uh, oh, and then I'm just going to put in a shameless plug for my own uh, local user group, BASUG, the Boston Area SAS Users Group. Uh, starting in July, we're going to be doing our own webinars, and I encourage you to go to our, our website, um, and right on our homepage, you can subscribe to our mailing list and you will be informed about our talks. Um, and I want to thank you for attending. If we were in person, I would give each of you a SAS object tip sheet, but you can easily find this online. Um, and that link is also in what I gave Alan. So there you have it. Um, I think I'm within my allotted time. <laughs> um, that's it. Are there questions? It, hi, uh, it is Bart here. Just one comment. I 100% or even 102% agree with your opinion about Paul's and, uh, and Don's book. Uh, the, the, the book is like masterpiece. <laughs> it's like if, if, you, if you want to use hash table, it's like must have to read. It's, it's perfect book. The, the, the only the only shame is that it, it, it was published so 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 long after uh, after um, advent of hash hash objects. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, it is, it is an amazing book. I think though, if you're starting off with hash, um, I, I think the, the other book, um, the, the reference is also a really good one to have at your side. <laughs> um, yeah. Elizabeth? Yeah. Um, can you use the debug function to build your, your hash um, expressions? Does it work? You know, I think it would because um, de debug works with the data step. And, and that's the thing. What's so great about hash is you get all the goodies of what's available to you in the data step. So, I, th I mean, you're not going to, let's see, are, I think, are you asking, will I see the values that are in I don't know that you can see the whole table using the debug, the debugger, but you you should be able to use the debugger because that works on a data step, and and you're doing this in the data step. All right, I just uh, if you know if you tried it, uh, I mean I'm I'm going to try it to see, it, but uh, I just want to know if it was yes or no. But it sounds as though it will. I think I have tried it, um, and for a, and I, I think I was doing it for a really weird thing that was happening. So, remember, you you're going to see what's in the program data vector. Yeah. Okay. Um, but but that should that's all we can ever see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. How big are your, the data tables that you're using this with? Okay. So. In the example that I'm showing you, you know, if you if you were going to do this, would you use hash for it in the the way I set this up? Maybe not. Um, but the the actual example, the actual task that I was faced with, um, the files were huge, hundreds of millions of records. Okay, and, that's what I was trying to get at. Yeah, I mean, hundreds of millions is is a reasonable size. Yeah. Yeah, and the other thing is that I. I had to do a lot of other stuff. I had to create a whole ton of variables on the fly. I was aggregating some of the variables that I needed to create, that I was creating in the data step. I used a whole bunch of different lookup tables. I was using views. I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on in there. And I couldn't have done it without hash unless I was going to do just a ton of sorting. And I just didn't want to do it. Yeah, um, uh, the, the the example you gave with proc means, I mean, you know, I've never used by uh, variables in proc means. I always use class variables for which you don't need sorting. True, but supposing you had to create some variables before you, uh, absolutely. I mean, this is. I mean, this is not the only way. And no, there's I, I, no. I'm just. I'm yeah. just sort of. You know, it was enjoyable what you were talking about, but you know, I, I kind of felt that you were a bit down on some of the other methods uh, when what you ended up was with was quite a lot of code. You know, and certainly more code than a proc mean statement would have had. You know, for the bit that it was doing. But I mean, no, it was interesting nonetheless. And I have used hash tables before, but. I just felt that your your focus was a little bit too much towards hash, and you know, not really giving a fair you know a crack to the other ones. Um, and what computer were you doing the sorting on? Was it a Unix box, or were you trying to do it on a desktop, or what? Well, I wasn't. Um, uh, actually, I've done this on multiple different platforms, and I wasn't trying. It wasn't that I couldn't sort. Right. I could have solved this other ways, and. And remember that I simpl I simplified the, the the task just so I could show how to do the aggregation. No, I get um, that. I totally get yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and I and I agree. I mean, and I believe me, I'm not down on any of the other tasks. Mm -hmm. I know that when you get a hammer, everything starts looking like a nail. Mm -hmm. I don't use hash to solve everything at all. Um, yeah. So I, I agree with you, actually. Uh -huh. Okay, no, that's fine. I mean, but actually, also, I mean, I think that what you've what you've done is is interesting. It's really interesting, um, uh, you know. And there, it's a bit like anything else, you know. Um, when you need them, they are absolutely the best thing on the planet, you know. Uh, hash tables, you know. Um, but but um, you know, it's just it's a case of horses for courses. Yeah. Great. Do we have any more questions? Oh, hi, Alan. It's Paul Frost. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Great. Just uh, maybe a slightly left field question, Elizabeth, but 
I've, I've got I've got Paul's book and and the one from Michelle, and they're they're both fantastic in their own way. Um, have you seen anybody making much use of things like the equals methods, as as well as all of the sort of aggregation finding output methods, which most people seem to discuss? Um, I haven't I haven't used it myself. Um, so I, I guess that's a no. Is that was that your question? Have I used it or? Yeah, it's just it's quite difficult to find out much information about some of the methods. So, um, Alan, if you want to give me a couple of months, if you'd like me to come and talk about that, if I can put something together, I'd be happy to do that. Always looking for presenters. You'd be very welcome. Just to say we use it. We've started to use hash tables quite a lot in, in some of the clinical programming that we're doing, because although although I agree with Robin that you end up potentially with more code than you would have done this it's really nice being able to join some of your clinical data without sorting it multiple times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, and that's, and that's absolutely brilliant. The other aspect of, uh, you know, that lookups, I mean, I'm actually a big fan of formats as lookups. If you've got that kind of one to one building them from data sets, um, I find that's a really good way of getting around the need to, you know, do some sorting and, and some other manipulation that you might otherwise want. But as Elizabeth said at the beginning, SAS is just so awesome because it gives you such a range of stuff that you can choose from, you know, you're never short of a method for, for solving uh, any problem. Absolutely. Do you use dynamic, dynamic formats much, Rap? as in built from data sets during the execution of the code? No, as in, as in put C and put N, so you can you can have a different format based on the value of a variable that you're assigning it to. Uh, no, That's... I've not, not really used that. I mean, it's just a case of what you need for what your work that you're doing, but that's interesting interesting to uh, you know to follow up on um, I bet I'd be interested in somebody doing a talk on that <laughs> <laughs> there you go there you go Alan so I've got I've got two potential topics later in the year if, if you want me to uh, to come and talk about one of those that sounds great um, is there any more burning questions Then I would like to say a big thank you to Elizabeth for joining us. I will put the links on the um, flashcard and post them afterwards and the video will be on YouTube. So thank you all for coming along. Yeah, brilliant, thanks. Thanks Alan, thanks Elizabeth. Thank you, thank you both.